Um, I have the uh, task to do the introduction of uh, Jan Pietmans. Um, ik ga het in Nederlands doen, want mij is verteld dat hij eigenlijk een Nederlander is. Uh, alhoewel de presentatie in het uh, Engels zal zijn. Um, behalve dat uh, is hij degene die een waanzinnig heel mooi boek heeft geschreven over DNS. Een gigantisch boekwerk, waarschijnlijk kennen jullie het allemaal. En anders uh, is mijn voorstel om het uh, te kopen. Um, <laughs> yes, of course, shameless plug. PC. Um, nou, uh, laat ik niet veel van je tijd nemen. Um, we hebben vanavond helaas geen rijstafel. Uh, wel iets anders. Uh, ik had begrepen dat je daar heel erg van houdt. Um, sorry. But I, <laughs> maar I ordered the saté tonight, so it's okay. Oké, okay. perfect. <laughs> maar uh, zonder um, nou ja, meer van je tijd te nemen, uh, let's give it up voor Jan Pietmans. Thank you very much. You heard laughter here on the front, well, seat from you, front right. That's my friend Bert, who always makes fun that I'm the only Dutch person who doesn't speak Dutch. But that's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> May I see a show of hands? Who of you does not know what Ansible is? The, all the seats next door were occupied, right? That's why, that's why you're here? <laughs> okay, very good. Um, welcome, I'm Jan Pietens. I'm who have been using, it sounds like a drug abuser, I've been using Ansible for over 10 years, I think it's 11 years now, and um, I've done quite a few contributions, one of which was the Ansible, uh, Ansible Doc Generator, but I think I will be remembered as the person who killed the cows. Um, the, uh, as you might know, uh, Ansible is able to use cow say, and I was the person who provided a patch to disable that, and ever since then I've been uh, known for uh, yeah, disabling the cows. If you see any cows in this presentation, I'm still trying to make amends for that, uh, for that mishap. Good. So what I'd like to uh, discuss with you today is a little bit about Ansible facts. Ansible facts are variables which are obtained from remote nodes. Sorry, my headset is falling off. Um, which are returned from uh, remote systems, from remote nodes. These are typically obtained automatically. And, um, This happens at runtime. If we so desire, we can, of course, also disable this. Um, these uh, facts are uh, little bits of information, such as, for example, IP address of a node, uh, number, uh, uh, maximum amount of uh, memory that is installed in a node, etc. We'll see a, a few examples in a moment. And these uh, facts can be cached, and there are reasons to do that, and for also reasons not to do this, and I would like to discuss that together with you. In addition to facts which are obtained automatically by Ansible, we can also create our own modules which return facts. And there's a wonderful uh, system called Local Facts, which was developed or created originally uh, by a chap called Seth Vidal, who unfortunately uh, was killed in a bicycling accident. Uh, very soon after we discussed that, um, well, we both had the idea, but he wrote the code, so that's fine. Um, So let's see some examples of Ansible facts. If you've used Ansible, you are very likely familiar with this output, or at least partial uh, of this output. We have uh, variables such as, for example, our Ansible architecture, Ansible default IPv4 addresses, uh, Ansible IPv6 addresses, IPv6, um, um, yeah, seems to exist, um, host name, and all sorts of physical information such as uh, disks that are available Uh, partitions that are available, etc. This, of course, depends on the actual operating system, on the actual, on the actual hardware. Facts are obtained uh, from within a playbook, typically uh, automatically. This happens with the gather facts um, statement, which we'll see in a moment. We can uh, change that uh, to our liking. Um, facts, or the gathering of facts, typically is the, I'll call it the zeroth task, so the very first task that runs in a playbook, unless we have, of course, disabled this, okay? Uh, these facts we can then use within our playbook. We can use them in tasks. We can use these facts within, for example, templates um, as variables, and as any other variable that we define in Ansible, be it an inventory variable, a host var, a group var, etc. Yeah, so facts are really just variables which uh, typically have a different provenance. 
Um, facts can be uh, re-obtained if we so desire. There are many users who are not uh, necessarily aware of this. So here's the second uh, task here. Sorry, the, I'm, I'm, I'm not nervous or not necessarily nervous. I always jitter. Um, uh, facts can be re-obtained. We can also gather just a subset of facts. And we might wish to regather facts within a playbook, not necessarily as a second task, but within a playbook, if we have, for instance, uh, programmatically or automatically created new local facts, for instance, or if we know that certain um, hardware situations have changed, we might wish to regather these facts. Similarly, with the meta uh, task, pseudo task, we can also clear the facts. So this will completely clear out in our running playbook, or in our running play, this will completely clear out the facts, and we would then either not be able to use any facts anymore, or we would, for, for instance, regather the facts. Okay? Um, we can gather subsets of facts. Here I'm doing this on an ad hoc basis. We have the uh, Ansible uh, uh, invoking the setup module, and here with the arguments gather subset equals and then a subset of the facts. Uh, please do not ask me whose idea it was to have a, the possibility to disable gathering all facts, but we would in, uh, in addition have to disable gathering a minimal subset of facts. I still today, to date, do not understand the logic behind it, but not all does not include or excludes not minimal, so that's why they, are, they look duplicate there. Uh, so in that subset there, I'm uh, asking for not the minimal subset, not all, I have to, if I don't want any, any facts at all, and then I want the DNS facts. So the DNS facts is the information that currently is returned by the setup module uh, um, with information gleaned from, for instance, the resolve.conf on a Unix system, which is what we, what we see here. There are a number of defined subsets currently, uh, quite a large number, actually. Um, but um, I would like to point out that this number is, um, or looks more capable than it actually is. If you look at the bold ones that I have at the bottom there, user, user, dear, et cetera, they basically return, not only basically, they return exactly the same information. So it's not quite clear why these subsets exist in that form. Um, my assumption is that somebody had good plans which were never really uh, implemented. But uh, I, to be honest, I, I do not know. Yep. I have not uh, asked a developer um, or the developers. Yeah, so there are a whole bunch of uh, subsets which uh, gather different information depending on the operating system, depending whether these, this information is actually um, available. The minimal subset is uh, maybe sufficient for a whole number of applications. In the minimal subset, uh, we have, for instance, the DNS facts, we have the SA Linux facts, we have the user information uh, where uh, uh, the uh, Ansible user is running. We have, for instance, uh, DateTime, which originally was created by Don, Don Kersten. Are you here? Yeah, he's sitting there in the, in the audience. And, um, also, um, one set of facts which for me is absolutely brilliant, and I would like to uh, show you what that is, and those are the local facts which I've, uh, which I've shown there. Okay? We'll discuss that in a moment, and I'll show you examples also for that. Um, facts can be collected, of course. They are collected automatically, and facts can be stored. So using, for instance, a copy module with content, everybody... Um, Everybody know the content parameter to copy? Yeah, okay. Uh, with um, uh, content uh, in copy, we could, for instance, store the facts in a file and then browse through them later on or process them um, programmatically at a later stage. So that is, uh, that is uh, can be quite interesting, okay? Uh, please do consider the environment before printing your facts. So that still shows up on the bottom of emails. I was very surprised about that recently. So these facts are typically gathered in a playbook. They are gathered and they are cached as long as the playbook runs. And as soon as the playbook stops, the uh, facts are removed. 
And um, ever since the beginning of the Ansible project, I recall on the IRC uh, channel, uh, somewhat on a frequency of about eight hertz, there used to be people asking, can we please have these facts stored in a database? And the project always said no, because that uh, would mean that we need a database, etc. And once upon a time, somebody had an excellent idea, and that it was to cache facts um, on, a, on an always basis. So Ansible Playbook would always cache the facts. And um, what we want to do is store these facts for later use. And this caching, by default, occurs in the form of plugins. And there is a default plugin called memory. So when the facts are obtained from the remote system, they are cached in memory for the duration of the playbook. At the end of the playbook run, the memory is destroyed, of course, and then the facts are destroyed. Now, this caching is enabled on a per Ansible config basis. I'll show you in a moment where this is configured. And this makes it very, very um, flexible to define uh, what type of users, what type of playbooks are going to be actually using uh, fact caching. Not everybody profits from fact caching, or rather, let me rephrase that, not every installation actually desires to have a long-term fact caching. Uh, but due to the fact that we can configure this in an Ansible config, due to the fact that there are four different locations which an Ansible config exists, you will know dollar Ansible config, they are read in this order, dollar Ansible config, dot slash Ansible config, tilde slash dot Ansible config, so in my home directory, or beg your pardon, in the uh, system directory, so slash etsy, slash ansible, slash ansible.config, or user local, in the case of BSD systems, typically, due to the fact that we can configure in an ansible config whether we want caching or not, we can have a very flexible and also very dynamic system. Um, so this caching or these caching plugins are enabled on an uh, ansible config basis. And there are a number of plugins. Um, that come along with Ansible. Uh, there's, for example, the JSON file plugin, which allows us to have facts stored as a JSON blob, as a JSON string in text files on the file system of the controller. There's memcached, which uses the um, likewise named uh, daemon to store them on a network-wide uh, system. There's Pickle, for example, the Python um, rep uh, data representation format. There's Redis, the key value store uh, cre originally created by Salvatore Sanfilippo, very, very uh, well known in the web uh, area, for example. There's MongoDB, which for many years used to be a write once database, I think, but I believe that's been uh, slightly fixed. And uh, we can also um, store facts in uh, YAML files if you prefer, to, uh, if you prefer that to uh, JSON. Uh, YAML might be a, a solution that you want. Um, so these plugins can, um, be, can also be uh, created by ourselves. We can create our own fact caching plugins. We want to store these, uh, these uh, facts <coughs> excuse me, in some specific database. And um, they can also be provided as part of a collection, in which case we use the fully qualified collection name for the plugin itself. Um, what would we do with facts that are being cached in one of these databases or one of these data stores? Well, one possibility, for example, would be to synchronize or to, uh, to consolidate uh, certain values that we've retrieved via Ansible with our configuration management database, uh, the uh, enterprise um, database. Uh, what's it called once again? Oh, yeah, right, there we are. Um, so um, we could. Uh, in doing so, in doing so, we could, uh, for example, have facts collected, stored, for instance, in JSON files, and then uh, every evening uh, read these JSON files, read out the facts, and maybe upload them to our CMDB. Not necessarily the CMDB, but you get the you get the point, I think. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, how is caching configured? We already mentioned. Uh, that this happens in the Ansible config file. And here we have a small excerpt of an Ansible config file. The only thing missing there for space reasons is no cows equals true, which is an absolute must in your uh, Ansible config. Um, first of all, we have the gathering parameter, which uh, by default is implicit, uh, which means that facts are gathered automatically 
unless we disable fact gathering with gather facts false. The second possibility is to configure fact gathering, uh, gathering explicitly, which means facts are not gathered by default, but can be gathered if we configure in the play, uh, if we configure gather facts uh, true. And here we've configured uh, fact gathering smart, and fact gathering smart means facts are obtained if they are not yet cached. If the cache has meanwhile been invalidated, then facts will be regathered. Um, fact caching, uh, the fact caching parameter shows us which uh, plugin we uh, decide to use. Here I'm using the uh, JSON file plugin. And with fact caching timeout, we configure um, the, the uh, time um, during which the fact cache will be valid. I think of this a little bit as a TTL, as a time to live for my facts. And with fact caching connection, we have a, let's say, connection URI for the actual plugin. Sorry that I'm fumbling around with my uh, microphone here. We have a, fact, uh, we have a, a connection uh, URL to our uh, plugin. And with JSON file, for example, or YAML, uh, we uh, specify the path on a file system. And um, in this directory, uh, Ansible will automatically create um, individual JSON files named uh, as the host. Uh, in the case of Redis, for example, we would have a Redis URI, which looks something like uh, hostname colon, Redis port colon, and then uh, Redis database number. Yeah? And depending on the plugin, this connection um, will be appropriately uh, specified. When we run the playbook, uh, then what actually happens is in our fact cache, um, then on the basis of our host name, we get the individual facts. Now, when I wrote this, I was hoping that for lunch there would be corner milk. That's why my uh, example is uh, accordingly. Uh, so uh, what happens here is we see um, facts returned in Ansible Locals, one of the local facts for the conference, NLUG, and for lunch, there should have been this string as a drink. Okay? But there wasn't. I was very disappointed. I won my money back. I didn't pay. OK. Um, facts can be created. The variables uh, at runtime can be created. And facts can be created with the setFact module. The setFact module creates individual, <coughs> excuse me, creates individual uh, variables. If we specify a variable and set it to cacheable true, then Ansible will automatically mark this variable, mark this fact as being uh, cacheable. So in other words, it will also be written into our fact cache, um, irrespective of how we have configured that fact cache. So this information then um, is uh, stored then obviously in our cache. We are, uh, in our example, we're using JSON files. So we have here the information coming out of the JSON. Um, what we can also do is to create um, custom fact gathering modules. This occurs occasionally, not very many people do this, I think, um, but I have a small shell script up there, and that shell script is going to return a key um, called Ansible Facts. And in this Ansible Facts, we have any number, any number of um, additional uh, keys, strings, values, etc which are automatically returned by these modules, and they will automatically be, um, be uh, merged into the Ansible facts. And if we have configured caching, they will, of course, also be cached. These uh, custom fact gathering modules, we can configure in an Ansible config to use just these. So in this particular case, uh, my setup will use exclusively this setup module, this uh, fact gathering module. Any module, um, any default module, any module that we create, any module that we write, can additionally also return facts. So modules can do something, such as copy or file or user, which do something on the remote nodes. But uh, modules not only do something on the remote nodes, modules can also return any number of facts. And um, in order to do so, these modules can uh, return metadata, of course, and they do return metadata 
for example, changed or any other values. Um, but these modules can also return a key called Ansible facts, and in this key or under this uh, under this key Ansible facts, here again they can return any amount of of information, and this information is then uh, merged together with the facts, which, if caching is configured, will of course also once again be cached. A tiny little <coughs> module in Python which does this using the Ansible library. Um, what I'm doing here is running a command on the remote system, on the remote node, I'm running a who and uh, gleaning out the uh, username sort, uh, sorted, and then I get the list of users, and that is what I return here in the key Ansible facts. The other keys are returned as part of the metadata. These key, this key Ansible facts will automatically be, um, as I say, merged into, uh, merged into Ansible facts. Okay. Okay, local facts. Um, local facts I personally find absolutely fantastic. If you don't like them, I'm not going to talk to you ever again. Um, I co-created local facts. As I said, we co-discussed we co this. Uh, Seth Vidal and I, the first time there was uh, invited to the very first um, uh, Ansible Fest in Boston in 2013, I think it was. Um, but Seth uh, created the code. What exactly are local facts? Sorry, I'm, this is really uncomfortable. What exactly are local facts? Local facts are files, and these files must reside in slash etsy slash ansible facts.d, respectively on uh, BSD systems. This would be user local uh, etsy ansible facts.d. The directory name is a must, although we'll see in a moment we can, of course, uh, change that. These files must be named with an extension dot fact. And what is going to happen is ansible the setup module in Ansible is going to go out to the node, uh, verifies that that directory exists, checks whether those files exist with an um, extension dot fact, and then checks the following. If they contain any format, or if they contain JSON, then they are parsed accordingly, and the local facts uh, files are then merged into the Ansible facts. If the dot fact file is executable, be it a shell script or a Ruby boot program or a C program or whatever, then this executable is executed. The executable must return JSON, and this JSON is then merged into the, um, into the facts. Um, what can we do with these? Well, we can do any number of things, and we're collecting ideas, uh, sort of more or less publicly ideas at this URL. We can do all sorts of things, like, for example, make a note of who is responsible for the particular machine. Maybe we have certain uh, sensors that are provided by the hardware manufacturer. I assume here in the Netherlands, you purchase your uh, server hardware at Albert Heijn, and maybe they have certain, um, certain sensors that they offer. Yeah, of course, obviously not, but uh, certain sensors that they offer, you might want to uh, be able to access certain values. Uh, you might want to have a fact that is returned with the, containing the version number of a particular software package that you have installed on the, on the server. These are things that we can do in Ansible facts, uh, in Ansible local facts. Um, here, a very small example. We have a, an any file, which is called machine.fact. Uh, this any file contains a, a, a section and two keys. And when we then go out and get the facts for the system, and we filter with Ansible local, in Ansible Local, we get a key called machine. That is the name of the file, or the name of the program, if it is executable. And there in there, a key containing the section and a key containing the individual, um, the individual keys and values. Any number of such keys and any number of such files can exist. And of course, then later on, for instance, within a template or in a playbook, we can then access that contact information as shown at the bottom. Yeah? So typical uh, Ansible fact, which has been returned from one or more nodes. How these fact files actually find their way onto the node, that is, of course, completely um, independent of Ansible. Obviously, Ansible could take them out themselves, but there are also situations in which they are created when the machine is uh, originally instantiated, or they are uh, created by some uh, intern who's been told to edit the uh, files appropriately. Um, 
from these facts, just as from any other facts, um, Ansible can create groups. This is probably familiar to you. This is nothing spe specific about uh, local facts, um, but we can create groups from uh, facts. So in this particular case, what we're doing here, we have a play, or rather a playbook with two plays. In the first play, we're gathering a subset. We're gathering the local subset. And we're going to create a group, group by this key, and that is Ansible local machine info location. You recall from a slide earlier, the location is that rack number yeah, where the machines are, are, are contained. Uh, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to clear the facts because uh, these facts have maybe been cached. And if they've been cached, we wouldn't be able to gather the next subset, which I want to do here. So I'm clearing the facts. And then in the second play, I'm going to uh, uh, access or address the group called Rec49. And this, this group was created earlier, uh, but now exists. And um, this group, Rec49, will address all the hosts that have a location of Rec49. And here we're going to, for instance, go and gather a different subset and go into actually the deployment that we really wanted to do. So quite a powerful uh, mechanism that we have there in Ansible. Yes? This would only work if you run those two within the same playbook, right? This will work if we run the two inside the same playbook. Yes, that is correct. But only, uh, yes, that is correct. That is correct. I think what you might be, if you're asking that way, you might be looking for this. And uh, I learned this very recently by a chap called Kevin. Um, constructed hosts uh, give us the possibility to create special inventory which uh, uses any number of facts um, to actually also once again create groups. So what we are doing here is we're creating a number of groups, or he is creating a number of groups. This is copied from an example that he showed me. Creating any number of groups. So he has uh, in his environment Ansible local files, so local facts um, for Zabbix systems. And he has a fact called Ansible local system Zabbix role. And this role is either a server or an agent or something similar. And from these facts, he's uh, generating groups and will be using these groups as inventory groups. One um, small caveat with this, um, uh, with this system is we need to make sure that the time to live on the fact cache does not expire before this is run. So these constructed uh, hosts only work from cached facts. Yeah, they do not work from live facts. That might be sort of the direction that you want to go to. So, um, Windows is also a topic for some people. There are, of course, also facts on Windows. There are also local facts on Windows, however, with quite a number of differences. First of all, in, on our Windows targets, or on your Windows targets, there is no default no standardized facts.d path. This we have to specify in our playbooks, and I'll show you in a moment how. The local fact files found on Windows must be either JSON, like we had on Unix Linux systems, or PS1, so PowerShell uh, scripts. These PowerShell scripts will output raw hash tables and arrays and so on, which are then parsed by Ansible and will be converted to internal data representation. And uh, a great difference between the Windows implementation and the Unix implementation. Sorry, when I say Unix, I also mean Linux in this uh, context. Great difference between these two is in Unix Linux, the facts, local facts, are always brought back under the key called Ansible underscore local. Yeah, below that, so we cannot touch. We cannot touch any of the standard facts. On Windows, our facts are brought back alongside all sorts of other facts. So this is a bit, little bit difficult to, maybe a little bit difficult to manage, but I'll show a possible alternative. Um, if you are wondering why PowerShell, well, that's because we don't have Python on the, uh, on the node. Uh, PowerShell, because that's one form of scripting. And JSON is also understandable, but what happened to INI? And yes, indeed, there is no INI uh, for Windows servers, OK? Uh, which for me was, how do I phrase this bullet? Is the camera still on? Um, <laughs> and um, 
This is the part of code of setup.ps1, which is the Ansible setup module, um, which actually goes out and do, uh, to do this because I, I wanted to sort of bet that you wouldn't believe me. And here it is. Yeah, we are, uh, they check for PS1, they check for JSON, there's no any, okay? Which is rather surprising. Anyway, let's have a look at a small example. Here we have a tiny little executable which, pro which produces a, a JSON object. And this uh, uh, in a program called hungry.exe. And this um, a program is invoked in a um, PS1 in a PowerShell script called curry beer. Yeah, and it just invokes that executable and then converts from JSON. This is the PS1 is how to execute um, executable facts on our Windows system. Um, in order to uh, configure a fact path, in order to have uh, the possibility to define a fact path, there is the fact path variable which sadly must be specified within the playbook and it has to be specified before the setup module runs. Here I'm doing this with the module default where I can uh, configure such defaults for modules that run subsequently. I say sadly because there has now been for I think a number of years, I forget exactly how long, there's been a ticket and issue requesting that this be uh, a group variable, for example, or a host variable, so that this, can, this could be configured in the inventory, uh, for instance, yeah? which would, uh, in my opinion, make a hell of a lot of sense. But it's not yet uh, been accepted. Long story short, um, what I would do is either using, the, using something like a ternary uh, filter, either configure fact path for Windows, respectively for Unix, or just configure it, I've, that's why I've, I've, I've written it here in a slightly lighter uh, uh, font, uh, configure it in an, uh, in an inventory, for instance, and uh, just be done with it, yeah? And then in the following, don't worry about reading this here now, but in the following we see that, for instance, uh, our curry beer um, fact is returned directly as Ansible curry beer, Whereas our hungry information, by the way, same, same information, no? same data, same uh, provenance um, on Unix is returned as Ansible underscore local and then a key that we desire. Long story short, this looks a little bit messy and it probably is, but long story short, we can ensure that both on Windows and on Unix, localhost here is Unix, that both on Windows and on Unix we have the same var variables, the same paths, the same um, the same variable addresses. So that's uh, something that I would like to recommend um, one does to stay compatible. So there are a number of solutions. One possible solution would be, for example, to have a local.ps1 file on the Windows side and have uh, facts, dynamic facts, static facts, etc., all processed by this local uh, .ps1 because then we get back a key called ansible underscore local which is what I'm trying to, uh, without what I'm trying to um, actually uh, accomplish. Okay. So, um, yeah, scrap this because I just heard there's not our cell phone tonight, so forget about this. Okay. Um, Ansible facts are also used and uh, displayed in Ansible CMDB. Ansible CMDB, can I see a raise of hands? Anybody know that? Oh, very few. I see two hands, I think. Um, a wonderful little program, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the author, normally I credit people, but I forgot who, who did it. A wonderful little program which um, um, uses the output of a, an ad hoc setup in dash dash tree into a directory, here the directory O, and when we then run Ansible CMDB on that directory, it produces a single, single uh, all-inclusive HTML file, including CSS and whatever else they need in it. And I can open this HTML file in a web browser or serve it by any, any web server that I want. And then I get an output that looks like this. We can click on these individual values. Then the table here changes. The columns on the table changes. A really uh, fun and sexy little program because it just works. You know, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't damage. It doesn't hurt. It's not big. It's not Java. It's not Node. It's not, you know what I mean. I beg your pardon? I was just checking whether you're paying attention. Thank you, Kuhn. <laughs> I, 
I'd seen that earlier, but a uh, long time ago. <laughs> so, and uh, Ansible CMDB also um, shows us local facts. Here we see our hungry facts here, or our NLUUG lunch with, uh, with the kernel milk. Um, local facts, however, of course, only for Unix systems. Uh, the reason probably being that Ansible CMDB uh, or rather the setup module uh, wasn't invoked with the correct fact path upon starting, okay? So, um, there are nice things about Ansible facts. There are not so nice things about Ansible facts. Uh, basically, Ansible facts are always nice and Ansible local facts are particularly nice, in my opinion. Um, what is very, very good that uh, facts are cached on a per Ansible config basis. There are environments who have decided not to use fact caching, for example, because it, uh, it, um, there's the, the danger of having uh, stale facts, the facts that just become stale because the, uh, the TTL is very old. So we have to also be aware of fact decay because of large TTLs. For instance, um, Ansible date time yeah, or other parameters, other values that may change in the course of multiple hours or maybe even days. Uh, but the nice thing about the uh, fact caching is that when we can decide on an Ansible config basis whether we want to do so, whether we don't want to do so, whether we want to just do it partially, we might, uh, let us suppose Kuhn and I work together, we might have decided not to have fact caching. However, we want that sexy little Excel sheet, so we might just create a separate directory with an Ansible config containing fact caching um, enabled, and once a night or once a week or whatever, we run over the whole infrastructure, do a ping, and get the facts which we can then feed into our CMDB. So the, the, this is really, uh, in my opinion, very, very nicely done. Uh, maybe a little bit ugly, the incompatibilities between uh, Unix and Windows, particularly the fact that there is no any on Windows. This is really very surprising. I can only imagine it's a, an oversight. Um, the fact that we can... Which eggs? Okay. Um, the fact that the fact that we can uh, feed this in, this data to, let's say, our configuration management database is really a very nice thing. Um, beware, beware things that, in my opinion, are mind-boggling. Ton, you created the Unix portion of the software. I'm not saying you created the Windows. So what, as the author of the Unix portion of the software, what do you notice here in this example at the bottom? Well, first of all, the Unix Epoch Time does not have a decimal by default, okay? That's first of all. And on the Unix side, it does not have a decimal. And second of all, I ran this against a German version of Windows, and I forgot to configure decimal point as comma, uh, that is COBOL, and that's why it comes back with a comma. So really beware, the data that you get back has to be verified before using, but all data always has to be verified be before using. Okay, so th these are things that are really a little bit, uh, let's say, awkward. Um, we should, or my recommendation, we shouldn't do anything, but my recommendation is to try and aim for compatibility. So using uh, JSON files, for example, exclusively because there's no any currently on Windows, or maybe using a JSON files exclusively and no executable because the executables are different. Be that as it may, it's up to you to decide. The interesting thing, on, in my opinion, is we can, um, we can work on both ends quite, uh, quite homogeneously. So that's, that's really uh, quite nice. So that's basically, no, not basically, that's what I wanted to tell you about, and I'm getting a signal in five minutes, I'm, I'm on time. Um, that's, uh, that's a wrap. Um, that's what I wanted to tell you about Ansible Facts, and I hope there was something new for everybody there. Um, and before I wrap, just one more thing. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, by the way, um, this is a real thing. No? Um, it is currently on offer at IKEA or IKEA at IKEA in um, in Switzerland. It costs uh, 300 uh, Swiss francs. Do not buy it for me, please. Okay? <laughs>
you already have five. Can you put a cow on it? I beg your pardon? Can you put a cow on it? It is a cow. Can you put a cow on it? I suppose you could put a cow on it. Do you know that it took me a minute to come up with that title? It's a couch. And it's not only a couch, it's a cow from Switzerland. Anyway, it's too. <laughs> thank you for I the cows. I didn't think anybody would get it, so. Oh, th thank you for the cows. I got uh, two questions. Uh, one is there's the set fact um, uh, command or task um, that I normally use. Uh, and then I can also make local facts from that. Um, so. Why do you? Why would I use a whole special setup module instead of just using the set facts uh, task? That's the first question. And the second question is: um, I got a few machines that just freeze when I run certain setup uh, get effect modules, and I have no clue how to debug that because. Okay, I'm not providing Ansible support here today. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm also not a developer. Um, but let's get back to the first point. You use set facts, so why would you use local facts? Um, you can create a local facts from the, from the set facts uh, thing as well. Yes, but local facts are obtained from the node. So the idea behind local facts is um, not just to create facts within a playbook, but the idea in local facts is we've installed a node. There's a node here, and so somebody walked over here and used, uh, for example, a text editor or whatever to create a file, which from that moment on will automatically be provided as local facts in Ansible. That's the idea behind it. Do we now agree? Yes. No, okay. that might Good. be different ways. To um, it. And the, the thing with the freezing, of course, I, I, I do not know the answer. But um, what is absolutely possible, the setup module goes through a whole bunch of tests to determine, does this hardware exist? Does this hardware exist? Does this hardware exist? What I would do in that particular case, uh, maybe you've already done that, is to start off with no min, no all, and then slowly but surely add new subsets. Have you tried that? Yeah, well, that was, that was my train of thought as well, but I was hoping it was an easier way of doing that. <laughs> but uh, yes. <laughs> well, the easier way is use Puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now there is the man, yeah, Ardis, exactly. Yeah. I have a question. It's it's quite easy to uh, to store all the facts in some local uh, memcache or something. Is it also possible to read them from a playbook so I can get facts from other machines that are not part of the playbook? You want to get facts from other machines? Like like, yes, like this, when you use the puppet DB for the space over. Yes, this happens automatically. When Ansible goes out to let's say two nodes or three nodes, four nodes, when you, when you are talking to all these nodes in a playbook, um, as soon as Ansible has spoken to each of these individual nodes, all the facts over all the nodes are available in your playbook as a variable called host vars. Yes. And that, I think, would be the equivalent, I'm getting one minute, that, I think, would be the equivalent of what you used to, or uh, what you know as PuppetDB. No, yeah, well, I, I was actually referring to uh, hosts that are not part of that playbook. Just okay, maybe we can take that outside in a moment. Maybe half another question. Is there another question? The last question. One last question. Hi. Um, would it be logical to use these facts also for gathering uh, statuses of components on the host? For instance, what you showed was in the fact.d, you could use also a script yes. and get that script, generate some uh, status of uh, Absolutely. objects, and absolutely. then get that. Is that logical or is there oh, oh, no, no, more abs logical? Absolutely. That option? is one of the. One of the, in my opinion, one of the great benefits of local facts that we can do things like that. So there are, uh, there are, for example, situations where people have um, hot standby machines, which they sort of disable or enable on a per machine basis by checking something on the server on the node. So yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, not only 
Does that make sense? In my opinion, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I think time's up, so thank you very much. <laughs>